Well, it's over. We are hearing that the meeting between Trump and Putin is over. It lasted actually two and a half hours. It wasn't supposed to take that long. They had a lot to talk about. A good first face-to-face -face meeting, if you believe that the length of the meeting indicates any goodness at all. Right now, by the way, G20 leaders are gathering for a reception. This is in a concert hall in Hamburg. President Trump is expected to attend as soon as he can clean himself up from that meeting. Colorado Republican Congressman Mike Coffin joining us now. I guess it's a good sign it went on for two and a half hours, don't you think? I think that's a very good sign. Well, what, what exactly do you think is the main agenda? I mean, uh, some people say it's serious. Some people say it's a relation between Russia and the U.S. itself. Some people say North Korea. What's most important to you? Well, certainly all of the above. Uh, there's no question we need Russian cooperation uh, in North Korea. I mean, to, to stop them uh, from moving forward with their nuclear program. Uh, Russia sits on the, the uh, U.N. Security uh, Council, and, and they've, uh, they've not been, they're not supportive at this point in time. No, not so at all. In fact, they came out with this yeah. awful uh, information this week saying that sure. the United States is just as responsible for tension in the region as North Korea is, which is ridiculous. Yeah. No, that, that's ridiculous. Uh, we need their cooperation. Uh, they, they've not been cooperating in, in Syria in terms of deconflicting uh, uh, our, our air sorties against uh, ISIS, and so we need their cooperation there. Uh, their cooperation uh, cer certainly in fighting uh, ISIS and dealing with the, the Assad regime. And lastly, uh, we certainly need a, a pledge for them not to do any state-sponsored meddling in our elections again. Right, right. Uh, let me switch to China, if I can, because they also play a critical role with regard to North Korea. In fact, much more of one than, than Russia does. Oh, yes. And we had the tweet from the president, which, which caught me off mm -hmm. guard, and I had to check, and it turned out his figures were just about right on, which is that trade between North Korea and China has actually increased in the first six months of mm -hmm. this year by 40 percent. The actual number is 37.4, so it's pretty close to 40 percent. Uh, why do you think that is? Well, uh, China is a lifeline to, to North Korea. Uh, we, I mean, certainly all options have to be on the table to include a military option, but even on a, at a conventional level, that, that would be horrific. Uh, what we need is, is the cooperation from China put pressure on North Korea to give up their nuclear program. But they're not doing program. it. I mean, an increase of 40%. Yeah. You know, I, I look at some of the, the weapons displays they have, certainly when they were, uh, when they exploded the, the missile, when the missile took off, and you could see that it was a mobile missile launcher. They don't make those things in North Korea. Where does all this stuff come from? Oh, we, it, it, you, you trace it back to China. And so the fact is that we have to put sanctions on North Korea that, that impact China, sanctions on China as well, uh, in terms of uh, their trade relationship uh, dealing with North Korea, because China really has all the cards in this in terms of, of getting uh, North Korea to stop its program. And so that, I think the president is right. Uh, in, in saying that, that China is not cooperating and, and we're going to have to be tough on China. Of course, a lot of people wonder what happens with our debt. Who's going to buy the debt if, if yeah. not China, if we begin putting on a screw? Uh, representative, we thank you very much for coming in. Very interesting time. Mike Kaufman, uh, Representative Republican from Colorado.